Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. I hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, as always, we appreciate your viewership. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, tell a friend, all that good stuff so we can keep the unbiased technical uh, analysis movement uh, going. So let's talk about uh, the tape, right? Uh, you know, nothing on the surface. If you watched last week, you know, yesterday's video, uh, again, no news is good news. Uh, the market continues to kind of grind higher. A lot of people are comparing this into like an August type of a uh, rally, a slow, a uh, lethargic, uh, you know, uh, melt up, you know, call it what you want, right? The, the action has been uh, really, really good, even on days uh, that the market takes a rest, stocks are still uh, holding up. And and if you look at, uh, if you look at the, the leaders, right? And that's what everybody's gonna always turn to. If you look at the leaders, nothing is wrong, right? Absolutely nothing is wrong. Apple continues to be on an absolute monster run uh huge run right microsoft continues to be on the absolute monster run uh all that stuff all the goodies right netflix all the good stuff meta just keeps on going higher and higher there's some things i i i i like to um i i like to kind of look at the market a little bit differently uh when things get a little bit stretched out and, and again you can make that case uh the market could go higher and of course i'll, I'll always be on that side uh, of the ledger until the market gives me a technical reason. We'll get to that in a second. Why I think maybe you, you can you could be a little bit more not worried, but a little bit have uh, uh, an opinion, a little bit of a cautious. Uh, but I've always said uh, anytime something starts feeling a little unnerve, you know, unnerving, right? Then it means that something's there. And I, I go by the theory and the mantra of I'd rather be, uh, you know, I'd rather sell a day early than to sell late. And if you've been watching this video in a long time, I you know, my big mantra is uh, sell when you want to, not when you have to. And I start looking for clues, right? And I start looking at the leaders and I want to see what they're doing. Like I, like I mentioned, Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, uh, Meta, they're, they're absolutely outstanding. You start looking at other, uh, you start looking at other groups. And I started looking at the SPY. And if you look at the SPY today, it had its first little crack, right? First little crack today on the five-day moving averages, took out the previous day's low and traded right to the five-day moving average, giving the bears at least a definitive line and, and, and bulls investors kind of giving them a line in the sand to kind of watch, watch what happens if that line uh, gets crossed. But the most important part was when the stocks that had the biggest moves up, right, and the videos of the world, uh, the Teslas of the world, once they start getting close to that bottom channel and they keep on holding it numerous times, that's when I start worrying or start, not, I don't want to use the word worried, but that's when I start going a little bit more defensive in my long positions and start looking for more aggressive positions to the, to the downside. Because again, no matter how strong the rally is, and this has been a phenomenal rally, and I'm just using the video here as, as a case study, you know, and the video has gone from uh, 140, right? From the January lows from 140 uh, to 280. That's a hell of a rally, right? But if you notice in this hell of a rally, it had points of interest kind of like this when it kept on holding the same area twice in a row and then the next day it fell and the next day it followed through. Same thing here, right? It started getting heavy, held the bottom channel here a couple of days in a row. Next day went down, same thing right here, right? Got heavy a little bit, held the same channel here a couple of times in a row and fell down. And that's kind of what we're looking at. And, and the last, uh, actually the, the most recent point of view was, you see how I was, you guys remember a, a week ago how I was just sitting here holding the five day moving average and the next day, it confirmed and went lower. And that's kind of what I started noticing on, you know, several stocks, not only uh, stocks. I started looking at that on, on the QQQ as well. And this is kind of where I want to be a little bit more uh, responsible going into tomorrow's session, even if there's strength. And there's, you know, there's definitely some names uh, that I do like. If you guys remember uh, from yesterday's video, uh, Roku had a great, great uh, Roku, um, uh, RBLX, had a great, great breakout yesterday. Today, uh, it continued, went up another dollar fifty before it kind of got hit a little bit. Uh, Google was great, right? It got above the 304, confirmed 305, went right to the linear aggression line uh, at 105.7. These guys still like this thing. Uh, even Amazon uh, woke up, right? We talked about Amazon last night in the video. Uh, Amazon woke up. They came in with a lot of 105, 106 calls 
uh, for next week. So there's still a lot of things that are very, very juicy in this tape. You look at Snow, had an incredible run today uh, as well, very, very strong. So, you know, it, it's not going to stand out, right? What I'm talking about tonight, it's not going to stand out to a lot of people, and most people are probably not going, unless you're watching this broadcast or in, this, in, or in the live webinar with us, you're not going to really... Uh, you know, you're not going to really focus in or uh, on the focal point of, hey, by the way, we've held the bottom of the range now two days in a row. It might be something, might be nothing, but it, it, most people won't know it's there. And here's kind of the point of interest, kind of what, what I want to talk about for the next couple of days. You see the low here from two days ago. It was 1740, right, guys, on the Qs, 31740. If you look at today's low, it was 1780, right? Both days hug the five-day moving average. That's, you know, that's the, the orange line. For me, again, if you're a brand new viewer uh, to this channel, again, welcome. But for me, the five-day moving average is uh, the shortest point of who has control, the shortest point sentiment of strength and weakness over the five-day bullish, below the five-day, I don't use the word bearish, but at least a sell signal, so get a little bit of relief uh, action from both sides of the market. And you can see here on both sides, both days in a row, we touched the five-day moving average twice, the same way we touched the five-day moving average here actually th four times right on the previous move and next day follow through so guys write this level down right you see this whole 1714 level right through 1740 write this area down if the bears start taking control of that 31740 level there's going to be a back test to the to the rising support again if you believe in the theory of stocks trade from supply to supply. Well, that's the whole point of the PS60 theory, stocks trade from demand to demand. So if this is demand here on the five-day moving average, the next demand is 313. Again, nobody is calling for Armageddon. The bull thesis uh, is still uh, very, very real, and most stocks are still behaving uh, incredibly well. As I say every single day, it might not even happen tomorrow, right? We could be uh, you know, we could be having a conversation tomorrow. Hey, the market, you know, again, same thing. The market went higher, right? But again, our job as traders is to be prepared, right? Always be prepared for the worst. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. And make sure you're not caught uh, between uh, a rock and a hard place with your, with your pants below your ankles. And a lot of people, you know, they're going to be technology investors. And if, if they don't know this 31740 is an important level. They're just going to keep on buying stock, buying stock, buying stock. But the point is, if they do lose this level, we should get a pretty aggressive back test uh, to this 10-day moving average at 313. Just to be prepared, right, guys? That's it. Just to be prepared. It's our job to be on guard. And as I say all the time, lead with your shield, right? Not with your chin, right? So it's, it's very, very important. Uh, we talked about Tesla yesterday, right? Tesla, we talked about... Uh, you know, they, their delivery numbers came in. Some thought it was good. Some thought it was bad. Uh, I was watching to the downside today, caught a scalp in this thing. Again, there was a lot of support here. It held the 20-day moving average. That's what we talked about last night in the video. But I think we have to watch this thing for the next couple of days. This 50-day this moving average, you can see here, the last time it tried to, the bears tried to reclaim the 50-day moving average, they did so and then Tesla reclaimed and started rallying back. We're very, very close to touching the 50-day moving average, okay? And, and again, it might be a setup for tomorrow, might not be, but I want you guys to at least, especially for all you guys who trade Tesla or Tesla investors, at least you guys should be at least on alert that, hey, if this thing closes below the 185 level, right? The 185 level is, this is not at 185, my brain's frozen. If it closes below the 50-day moving average, 185 is, is irrelevant. You have all these support zones. I don't know where I got 85 from. But if you if it closes below the 50-day moving average, again, as we say all the time, whoever has control of the 50-day moving average probably has control of the next move uh, in that direction. So be wary. If Tesla loses the 50-day moving average, you know, we could have a pretty good scenario for a couple of days set up in a row uh, for a potential multi-day uh, move. So that's, that's definitely, definitely... Uh, on the table. Uh, today, the banks got hit, right? Uh, we saw a lot of uh, put buying coming in with banks. Uh, as soon as there is a downtick in the market, people are screaming, that's it. That's the top. Here comes the banks again. Banks have been getting hit, guys. Hate to break it to everybody. Not, banks have been getting hit now for three weeks in a row, ever since this whole SIVB started. Uh, in the same time, the queues, in the same time, literally, the queues have gone from 293 to 321. So, the banks and the technology sector are just not correlated. As much as you uh, put pins in your voodoo doll and hope the world ends and the sky is falling and everything else, they're just disconnected. It has nothing to do. But you do have, for all you guys who do trade the banks, be wary, right? Be wary. Uh, today, Bank of America, a lot of put buying we saw. 
Uh, the Citibank, a lot of put buying we saw, but we're, they're not yet at technical damage. If you see uh, Citibank, it's still above the green line, which is 10-day moving average. That's the birth of the trade. When you look at Bank of America today, the Bank of America lost the 10-day for a split second, and then reclaimed it on the close. Uh, you look at Goldman Sachs, right? They did the same thing. They held the 10-day moving average. So if you are trading banks, watch the banks, right? Watch the banks. If they start losing uh, the 10-day moving average, and if you believe that's the birth of the trade like I do, then you're going to have some problems, right? If you're an investor in the banks, you're, you're definitely going to have some problems uh, going into the next session. But for now, the bulls, even the bulls in the worst stock and the worst group of all, the banks, they're still uh, holding key levels and avoiding uh, technical breakdown. So going into uh, tomorrow's session, uh, you know, look at names, you know, look at names like NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is 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 mirroring, you know, NVIDIA, NVIDIA is mir mirroring um, the NASDAQ 100. As the QQQ sit there on the on the five-day moving average, NVIDIA is sitting there as well. Again, like I said, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but isn't it our job to be completely uh, in a position to be prepared on both sides. So watch the video. If this thing starts losing the five and the 10 day moving average, there's a lot of room down. Again, we're watching Tesla as well uh, to the downside. Uh, to the upside, Amazon uh, looks really, really good. Busted out today on this little baby consolidation channel. We talked about this last night. Uh, Google continues to act uh, really, really well. It, helped, it, it hit the linear regression line today. Uh, it excuse me, hit the Bollinger Band today and got rejected, but it's acting really, really well. Uh, maybe so that there's some more upside if the market continues. Uh, but names like Tesla, NVIDIA, the Qs, I'm definitely watching to the downside because, again, if there is a chink in the armor and we start confirming down uh, below the five-day moving average, everything will get pulled. Don't be naive and don't be uh, arrogant to think that your bias, your long bias position that you're in looks good. If the Qs get pulled, I promise, if it's a member of the NASDAQ 100, it's going to get pulled uh, right with it. So that's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. God bless everybody. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well, happy, healthy, and staying in business. Guys, God bless. See you tomorrow.